ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد then to continue with al usul al thalatha the three fundamental principles of Sheikh Sheikh Al Islam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab Rahmahullah with the explanation of Sheikh Salih Al Fawzan Hafizahullah. Then we reached page one hundred and twenty five in the Lebanese in the Lebanese print, which is on page ninety eight of the Egyptian print, to which there occurs in the edition of Sheikh Al Fawzan a small heading. Obviously, we have begun on the first of the three principles, the main body, main text of the book. We are within the first principle, the first fundamental principle. So on page 125, and Sheikh Al-Fawzan's explanation here has a heading, <coughs> Al-Islamu wal-Imanu wal-Ihsanu wa dalilu kullin. The previous title being the different types of worship. The different types of worship which Allah has commanded, and the proofs for each type, and that's followed here by this title, Islam and Iman and Ihsan, and the proof for each. Then there follows the text, the saying of Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, and you may have noticed that this particular text here is a repetition in the book. It's a repeat, this line here is a repeat of what we had last time. So, However, Sheikh Al-Fawzan, in his explanation, he brings some new explanation. So he's already explain, explained this phrase and brought some points, but now he explains this phrase again. So the saying of Sheikh Al-Islam, وَأَنْوَاءُ الْعِبَادَةِ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا مِثْلُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَالْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِحْسَانِ And the types of worship, meaning, and all the types of worship, which Allah has commanded, such as Al-Islam and Al-Iman and Al-Ihsan. And all the types of worship which Allah has commanded, such as Islam and Iman and Ihsan. Shaykh Al-Fawzan, Hafizahullah, he said in explanation, and the Shaykh, obviously referring to the author, Shaykh al-Islam, Muhammad ibn Abdul, Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, he said, and the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he quoted some examples for ibadah, for worship, as a case of quoting examples, not as a case of restriction, because they are more than what he mentioned. Meaning, in other words, Shaykh al-Islam is giving you some examples of worship. The greatest, by first of all mentioning the greatest types of worship. Islam and Iman and Ihsan. It doesn't mean that's the only forms of worship. Then he said, And it would not be possible to mention them all in a brief treatise. In all the types of worship. It wouldn't be possible to mention all types of worship in a small treatise. However, he mentioned some examples. And Shaykh al-Islam has a separate treatise. I should bring here to Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah. He has a separate treatise, which is called al-Ubudiyyah. In other words, worship and servitude, al-Ubudiyyah. He has this separate treatise, which researches the matter of ibadah, worship and the types of worship, ibadah, and an explanation of the deviations which occurred from the Sufis and others with regard to worship, ibadah. And it is a valuable treatise which the student of knowledge needs to read. The student of knowledge needs to read that. Meaning everyone who is a student of knowledge and serious about seeking knowledge needs to get hold of that treatise, al Ubudiya of Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah needs to get hold of it and read it. 
and it's obviously available and it's printed in Arabic, it's also been translated as well. You can get a hold even of a translation of that work, al Ubudi of Shaykh Islam, which is a great treatise with regard to worship. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, his saying, Rahimahullah, Mithlul Islami wal Imani wal Ihsan. His saying, Rahimahullah, such as, quoting the types of worship, such as Islam and Iman and Ihsan. These three types are the greatest of the types of worship Islam and Iman. And, ihs and Ihsan. And an explanation of them will follow in the speech of the Shaykh, Rahimahullah, with regard to the second fundamental principle later in the book. Rahimahullah. In a detailed explanation of each of these three, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan will follow later in the book. And he mentioned them here because they are from the types of worship. In this section of the book, he's describing some types having, having affirmed that all worship is to be for Allah alone, the Lord, he is the one deserving of all worship. Now he mentions some of the types of worship, and the greatest of them being these three, Islam, Iman, and Ihsan. Then Shaykh Fawzan briefly explains each of these three. How can we say that each of these three, Islam, and Iman, and Ihsan, how can we explain that they are types of worship? What does that mean? How do we understand that? He said, So Islam, with its five pillars, the two shahadas, the two testifications of faith, and establishment of the prayer, and giving the zakat, and fasting Ramadan, and making hajj to the sacred house of Allah, these are all acts of worship, which are maliya and badaniya, acts of worship relating to wealth and relating to the body, bodily acts of worship as well. Then he moves on to the second one, al-iman. He said, and likewise, iman with its six pillars, it is from the actions of the heart. Iman, true faith in Allah, and in his angels, and in his books, and in his messengers, and in the last day. And Iman, true faith in Al-Qadr, pre-decree, the good of it and the bad of it. This is Ibadatun Qalbiyyah. This is worship of the heart. Matters which you believe in your heart, these are matters of worship of the heart. Then he moves on to the third, ma the third matter. Well, just wait a moment for the adhan to be given, inshallah.
<coughs> then to continue, then Sheikh Al Fawzan, Hafizahullah, he moves on to the third matter, having mentioned how Islam, we say, is the greatest, these, these three are the greatest types of worship Islam and Iman and Ihsan. So he moves on to the third. So the first Islam, the five pillars of Islam are, are, are all acts of worship, bodily or bodily acts of worship or acts of worship involving wealth. Secondly, Iman, true faith. So the six pillars of Iman, they are all beliefs of the heart. So they are acts of worship of the heart. Then he says, and likewise Al-Ihsan, which is a single pillar. Obviously all of these being taken and the explanation being found in the Hadith of Jibreel. The famous hadith of Jibreel. So he said, likewise Al-Ihsan, and it is a single pillar. And it is that you worship Allah as if you were seeing him. And even though you do not see him, then he certainly sees you. This is the highest of the types of worship. Because Al-Ihsan is the highest of all the types of worship. And these are called the levels of the religion. I mean these three. Islam and Iman and Ihsan. These three are called the levels of the deen, the levels of the religion. Since together they are the deen, they are the religion. These three together are the religion. And he gives the evidence. Because Jibreel when he asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in the presence of his companions and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam responded to the question about Islam and Iman and Ihsan he then said هذا جبريل أتاكم يعلمكم أمر دينكم after Jibreel had, had departed and after some time then the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam told his companions, this was Jibreel. He came to you to teach you the affair of your religion. And if we look back in the hadith, what did he teach? What did he ask about and teach? These three, Islam and Iman and Ihsan. So it's, that is a proof that these three form the whole of the religion. As Shaykh Fawzan said, And as occurs in the hadith here, this was Jib uh, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "That was Jibril. He came. This was Jibril. He came to teach you the affair of your religion." The hadith being reported by Al Bukhari as hadith four thousand seven hundred and seventy-seven, and reported by Muslim as hadith number eight, nine, and ten, from a hadith of Abu, of Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. So he called these three the religion. I mean, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam referred to those three that Jibreel taught as being the deen, the religion. Then there comes a new heading on page one two seven: ad du'a'u aqsamuhu wa daliluhu. Ad du'a, supplication. Its categories and its proof. Then comes the saying of Shaykh al-Islam bin Abdul Wahhab. Continuing mentioning types of worship, he said, وَمِنْهُ الدُّعَاهِ وَالْخَوْفِ وَالرَّجَاءِ وَالتَّوَكُّلِ وَالرَّغْبَةِ وَالرَّهْبَةِ وَالْخُشُوعِ وَالْإِنَابَةِ وَالْإِسْتِعَانَةِ وَالْإِسْتِعَاذَةِ And there's a word missed out, missed out in this text here. وَالْإِسْتِغَاثَةِ وَالذَّبْحِ وَالنَّذَرِ وَغَيْرُ ذَلِكْ مِنْ عَنْوَاءِ الْعِبَادَةِ الَّتِي أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهَا كُلُّهَا لِلَّهِ تَعَالَى And actually there's another word missed out. After al-khushu' wal-rahba wal-khushu' Another word that's missed out in this edition which is wal-khashya. After al-khushu' there should be wal-khashya. They've just been dropped out of this printed edition of Sheikh of Fawzan's printed edition. In all, all other editions of the book you'll find these two words there. So with the explanation, and from it is ad-du'a, supplication, and al-khawf, fear, and ar-raja, 
hope and longing, and at tawakkul, trust and reliance, and ar ragba and ar ragba fervent desire, and ar rahba dread, and al khushu reverence and humility, and the first word missed out wal khashya and awe, well and al inaba turning repentantly and al isti'ana appealing for aid and assistance and al isti'adha seeking refuge and the second word missed out wal istighatha seeking deliverance and rescue and al dhabh sacrificing and another making vows and other than that from the types of worship which Allah has commanded. All of them are to be done exclusive, exclusive, exclusively for Allah the Most High. In explanation, Shaykh al-Fawzan said, his saying, وَمِنْهُ dua," And from it is a dua, supplication. Meaning, and from the types of worship is a dua, supplication. He began with it, and why in the list of all these act, different acts of worship, why did he begin with the ad-du'a in this list here? Sheikh said, Sheikh Fawzan, he began with it because it is the greatest of the types of worship. And ad-du'a, supplication, is of two categories. Du'a, supplication, is, du'a is of two categories. Du'a ibadah wa dua mas'ala there are the two categories of dua dua of worship and dua of request dua of making request then Sheikh of Hazan explains both of these and he explains these two or he explains the first of them in the light of Surah Al-Fatiha so he said dua al-ibadah dua of worship is to praise and extol Allah, the Perfect and Most High, just as occurs at the beginning of Al Fatiha. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, Maliki Yawmiddin, Iyaka Nabudu wa Iyaka Nasta'in. All of that is dua of worship. In other words, these are words of praise of Allah. Praising Allah for His Lordship, praising Allah for His names and attributes. So the Shaykh said, that all these, this first half of Surah Al Fatiha, this is dua. But if you look at it, you won't find a, a direct request being made. You will not see a direct request. What you'll find is words of praise of Allah. So the Shaykh said, this is dua of worship. With the explanation, all praise is for Allah, the Lord of the whole of creation, the extremely merciful, the bestower of mercy the sovereign owner of the day of recompensing. You alone do we worship, and your aid alone do we seek. As the Sheikh said, all of this is dua or ibadah, the dua of worship. Then the continuation of the surah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqeem, with the explanation, guide us upon the straight path to the end of the surah. This is dua u mas'ala. This is du'a of request. I mean, from that part of the surah, ihdina sirat al-mustaqim, it's a direct request from the servant. <coughs> Guide us upon the straight path, etc., etc. So the first part of the surah is a du'a, an implicit du'a, supplication, by your worshipping Allah with words of praise of Him. And the second part is a direct request and then he mentions the second type, وَدُعَاءُ masala, And the supplication of making request. It is to request something. You make a, to make a direct and open request. It is to make a request, to request something from Allah, the mighty and majestic. Such as requesting guidance. And requesting provision. And requesting knowledge from Allah. And requesting at tawfiq requesting and asking for the grant of success in attaining what is correct. And just very briefly, to mention something from Shaykh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthimeen, 
Then he likewise explains these two types of du'a, that du'a is of two types. Du'a, which is to make a request of Allah, is of two types. The first type, obviously the, the second type is the obvious one, making a direct request, oh Allah, grant me such and such. And the first type is to perform an act of worship with, within it, there being a request, that you're performing the act of worship because you're seeking from Allah his reward and his paradise. And because you're seeking to flee from his hellfire. That's why you're doing the act of worship. So within it, there is a request, even though you don't state the request upon your tongue. But in performing the act of worship, the act of worship itself is a dua, a request. So Sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al uthimin said, in his explanation of the three principles here, you should know that dua is of two types. The du'a u mas'ala, the du'a of request, and the du'a which is worship, du'a of worship. So the du'a of request is the du'a of making a request, means seeking things which you need. And it is worship, making requests, is worship if it occurs from the servant towards his Lord, then it's worship. Because it involves Manifesting one's poverty to Allah the Most High and resorting to Him and showing one's firm belief that He is fully able and generous and extensive in bounty and mercy. So if you so that is worship. Then he said, and it is permissible, it means permissible to make a request if it occurs from a servant to someone else from the creation from the created beings, if the one he is making the request of is able to understand the request and is able to answer it, as has proceeded. Like at the saying of a person, O oh, so-and-so, provide me with food. I mean, that is not counted as worship. You ask a person who can hear what you're saying and is able to carry it out, and you make a request of him, O oh, so-and-so, provide me with food. That is not worship, even though it's a request. Then the Sheikh moves on to, as for the dua al-ibadah, the dua that is worship, then it is that you worship him, you worship the one you are calling upon, seeking his reward and fearing his punishment. And this cannot be accept, this cannot be done, is not correct to other than Allah. And diverting this to other than Allah is, is major shirk, which takes a person outside the religion. Now, so back to Shaykh Fawzan's explanation, having just explained the dua, the two categories of dua, the du'a of worship, I mean the title of worship, with an understood request within that worship, and the second, a direct request. He said, or he rather he quotes on page 128, the evidence for that. al ahada. Al ayah min surat al jinn. He quotes the saying of the author. That in the main text here, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Abdul Wahhab, rahimahullah, and the proof is his saying, he the most high, and that the places of prayer are to be for Allah alone. So do not invoke anyone along with Allah. So do not call upon, do not worship anyone along with Allah. This has been the evidence for, for that which preceded. That du'a is from the types of worship. He said, Shaykh Fawzan said in explanation, this being, or the, with, the, with the, the ayah being from Surah Al-Jinn, 72nd Surah, ayah 18. Shaykh Fawzan said in explanation, explain this ayah word by word. He said, Al-Masajid, that the Masajid are to be for Allah alone. Shaykh Fawzan said, Al-Masajid, This word is used to mean, and he gives two meanings for this word. This word in the Arabic language, al-masajid, has two meanings. Obviously the first meaning being the common one. Al-masajid means the plural of masjid, the mosques. But he explains it has two meanings, and both are correct. He said, al-masajid, this word is used to mean the places where prostration is made, and those places where the prayer is performed. And they are the most beloved places to Allah, the mighty and majestic. And there occurs an encouragement with regard to building them and preparing them. So he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, 
من بنى مسجدا لله كمفحص قطات أو أصغر بنى الله له بيتا في الجنة. So the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم said, whoever builds a masjid, a place of prayer, a mosque, so whoever builds a mosque for Allah, like the nesting place of a sand grouse, like the nesting place of a sand grouse, or even smaller, then Allah will build for him a house in paradise. In a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Ahmad, from a hadith of Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma, and reported by Ibn Majah and Ibn Khuzayma from a hadith of Jabir ibn Abdullah radiallahu anhuma. And this hadith was declared sahih with this wording, sahih, authentic by Shaykh al-Albani in Sahih al-Jami' and Sahih al-Targhib, number 269. Obviously, with the general wording, that whoever builds a mosque for Allah, then Allah will build a house for him in Jannah, this is very well known, and the Shaykh brings a rarer wording here, but still authentic. That whoever builds a mosque for Allah, like the nesting place of a sand grouse, or even smaller. And in explanation, they mention this nesting place of a sand grouse is a, a little bird that lives in the desert. <coughs> when he wants to lay eggs, it, makes, it scratches a little hole in the ground, and it sits upon it. Smaller than the space taken by the foot of a person. A very tiny spot. Naam. Then with regard to Shaykh Fawzan's explanation, the continuation, he said, Allah says, so he's still explaining this word al-masajid with the first meaning, the places of prayer. So he quotes an ayah in that regard as, again. He said, إِنَّمَا يَعْمُرُ مَسَاجِدَ اللَّهِ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ Surah Tawbah, the ninth surah, ayah 18. With the explanation, that the masajid of Allah, the mosques of Allah, are to be maintained only by those people who truly believe in Allah and in the last day. Then Shaykh Fawzan explains what is meant by maintaining here, al-imara. He said main, main, maintain, maintaining means physical maintenance and spiritual maintenance. Maintaining them by clay. I mean the, the building materials that are needed for the mosque. This is the first meaning of maintenance of the mosques. I mean building them. It said maintenance by clay and whatever it needs so that it can shelter those who pray and, and can shade them from the heat and can shelter them from the cold and maintenance in the second meaning and maintaining them through worship by the prayer and the recitation of the Quran and the remembrance of Allah, the mighty and majestic. So all of that falling into the meaning of masajid, meaning the places where the prayer is performed, places where sajda is performed, the places where prayer is performed. Then he mentions the second meaning of masajid. He said, and this word masajid is also used to mean the seven parts of the body which prostrate. And they are the forehead and the nose, and the two hands, and the two knees, and the tips of the two feet. Because they perform prostration to Allah. I mean, these parts of the body that perform prostration, they're also called masajid. And the ayah covers both meanings. I mean, this ayah covers both of those meanings. I mean, that the masajid means those places of prayer, and it also means the parts of your body which you perform prostration with. So then, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجِدِ And that the masajid and the places of prayer, meaning the places where the prayer is performed, and the parts of the body which perform prostration for Allah the Mighty and Majestic. Both, with both meanings, this, they are to be for Allah alone. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا so do not call upon, do not invoke, do not worship anyone along with Allah. Shaykh al Fawzan said, do not make these masajid, these places of prayer, and these places, a place for shirk, and for calling upon other than Allah. Rather, it is obligatory that the mosques 
be purified from any shirk so there can be no graves in them and there can be no calling upon other than Allah in them and there can be no bid'ah innovations in them and muhtathat and newly introduced affairs and halaqat sufiya mubtada'ah and no innovated Sufi circles I mean, the mosques are for Allah only they are to be made purely for Allah the Shaykh said it is obligatory that the mosques are purified from innovations and from shirk and from sins because they are for Allah the mighty and majestic alone so there cannot be in them except that which is pleasing to Allah the mighty and majestic so do not invoke do not call upon anyone besides Allah in these mosques or utilize the parts of your body in prostrating to other than Allah the mighty and majestic because this is shirkun akbar this is major shirk just like the person who prostrates to an idol or to a grave or who prostrates to some false object of worship this is prostrating to something other than Allah the mighty and majestic so the witness in, is in his saying فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا so do not call upon, do not invoke anyone along with Allah the Shaykh, the Shaykh said this is a command for ikhlas it is a command to make dua, supplication purely for him alone and he's saying ahadan anyone this is general and it covers everything which is called upon besides Allah whether it be an angel or a prophet or a wali a beloved righteous servant or a tree or a rock it covers everything which is called upon besides Allah the mighty and majestic and this will be shirkun akbar. This will be major shirk. Then there comes the saying of, uh, of Sheikh Islam: "فَمَنْ صَرَفَ شَيْئًا مِنْهَا لِغَيْرِ اللَّهِ فَهُوَ مُشْرِكٌ كَافِرٌ وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَمَنْ يَدْعُ مَعَ اللَّهِ إِلَهًا آخَرَ لَا بُرْهَانَ لَهُ بِهِ فَإِنَّمَا حِسَابُهُ عِنْدَ رَبِّهِ إِنَّهُ لَا يُفْلِحُ الْكَافِرُونَ Surah Al-Mu'minun 23rd Surah Ayah 117 وَفِي الْحَدِيثِ الدُّعَاءُ مُخُّ الْعِبَادَةِ وَالدَّلِيلُ قَوْلُهُ تَعَالَى وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ اُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَسْتَكْبِرُونَ عَنْ عِبَادَتِي سَيَدْخُلُونَ جَهَنَّمَ دَاخِرِينَ الْآيَةَ مِنْ سُورَةِ غَافِرِ so the saying of Shaykh Islam Ibn Abdul Wahhab in the main text So whoever directs anything from them I mean from the types of worship So whoever directs anything from them To other than Allah Then he is a mushrik, a person of shirk A kafir, a disbeliever And the proof is his saying He the most high And he quotes the ayah from Surah Al-Mu'minun Ya Allah the 23rd Surah, Ayah 117, with the explanation. And whoever worships any other worship, and whoever worships any other object of worship along with Allah, which he has no proof for, then his reckoning will be with his Lord. Indeed, the disbelievers will not prosper. And the Author quotes, he quotes and says, and in the hadith there occurs a du'a'u mukhul ibadah. That supplication is the core of worship. And then the author mentions the proof, and the proof is his saying, He the Most High, I mean the proof that du'a supplication is worship, and the proof is his saying, He the Most High, Surah Ghafir, the 40th Surah, Ayah 60, with the explanation. And your Lord said, call upon me, make dua to me, I will respond to you. Those who are too haughty and proud to worship me will enter hellfire in disgrace. 
alaykum as salam wa rahmatullah. Shaykh al-Fawzan said in explanation, and he begins by explaining the ayah from Surah Ghafir. He said, وَقَالَ رَبُّكُمْ The part of the ayah with the explanation, and your Lord has said, Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning, your Lord has commanded you and said, Ud'uni astajib lakum. With the explanation, call upon me, make dua to me, call upon me, invoke me, and I will respond to you. Shaykh Fawzan said, He has commanded making dua to him, he has commanded making supplication to him, he the perfect, and he has promised to respond. And this is from his generosity, he the perfect and most high. Because he has no need at all of our supplication. Rather, we need to make supplication to him, he the perfect and most high. So he is commanding us with something which we need and which will be to our welfare. And he the perfect becomes angry if you abandon making request of him. Whereas with regard to the creation, the creation becomes angry if you make request of him. I mean, the opposite is the case. And then he gives some lines of poetry in that regard, which we'll mention in a moment, inshallah. But just before moving on, with regard to the hadith, they mention, uh, the author said, and in the hadith there occurs, ad du'a'u mukhul ibada, that du'a is the core of worship. Then, in a footnote, they mention this hadith is reported by Tirmidhi from a hadith of Anas ibn Malik, radiallahu anhu, and its chain of narration contains Ibn Lahi'a, contains the narrator, the famous narrator, Abdullah ibn Lahi'a, who is weak, but can be used as, uh, used or noted down as evidence for, support, for supporting narrations. With regard to this particular hadith with this wording, then Shaykh al-Albani mentioned in his checking of al-Mishkat that this wording, ad-du'a'u mukhul ibadah, du'a is the core of worship. Shaykh al-Albani likewise, he said it, this chain of narration is weak because it contains Ibn Lahi'a, who had a poor memory. And what is correct with regard to this hadith is the wording which preceded. And the correct wording, the authentic wording is, and this is a point which Shaykh Muhammad Aman al-Jami, rahimahullah, he pointed out in his explanation as well. That this particular wording here is weak, but the, the authentic wording is, and the, the meaning is, is basically the same. But the authentic wording is a hadith of An-Nu'man ibn Bashir, radiallahu anhuma, who said, Allah's Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Ad-du'a'u huwa al-ibadah. Supplication, it is worship. And then the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, recited the ayah, this ayah. Wa qala rabbukum ud'uni astajib lakum. Surah Ghafir, the 40th Surah, Ayah 60, with the explanation, and your Lord said, call upon me, make dua to me, I will respond to you. This hadith has been reported by Ahmad and the four Sunan, and is declared Sahih, authentic by Shaykh al-Albani. And Shaykh Muhammad Aman, likewise, he mentioned this wording is more authentic, even though the meaning is basically the same. So back to the point we reached, that Shaykh al-Fawzan, he mentioned that Allah has commanded us to make dua to him, but he has no need of our du'a. He has commanded us with something that we are in greatest, the greatest need of. And it's something to our welfare. And indeed, Allah becomes angry if we don't make requests of him, ask of him. Whereas with regard to creation, if you make requests of the creation, you make requests of people, they become angry with you for making the request. And then he quotes some, as we said, some lines of poetry from different poets in that regard to show this point. So he said, therefore, the poet said, Allahu yaghdabu in tarakta su'alahu wa bani adama hina yus'alu yaghdabu saying of the poet Allah becomes angry if you abandon asking him but the children of Adam when you ask he becomes angry in the exact opposite he said and another one said another poet said falaw su'ila an-nas فَلَوْ سُئِلَ النَّاسُ التُرَابَ لَأَوْشَكُوا إِذَا قِيلَ هَاتُوا أَنْ يَمِلُّوا وَيَمْنَعُوا Another poet said, So if you were to ask the people, 
just for some, for some soil. If you'd ask the people only for some soil, they would almost, when it was said, give it, become irritated and withhold it. Even if you ask them for some dust from the ground, they, you ask, give it, please give me some soil, they'll get fed up, they'll become irritated and withhold it. Whereas Allah the Most High, he's commanded us to make request of him, and he becomes angry if we don't make request. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, dividing the people into three categories with regard to du'a, supplication, he said, so the people are of three categories. The first category are those who do not make du'a to Allah at all. They don't call upon Allah at all. So he, this person, is too proud and haughty to worship Allah. The second type of person is the one who makes dua to Allah. He calls upon Allah, he makes supplication to Allah. However, he makes supplication to other than him also. So he is a mushrik. He is a person of shirk. And the third person is one who makes dua to Allah, making dua purely and sincerely for him. So he is al-muwahid. He is the person of Tawheed. Then Shaykh Fawzan said, and there occurs in the hadith that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Ad-du'a mukhul ibadah. That du'a is the core of worship. And in one narration, Ad-du'a huwal ibadah. That du'a is worship. And the, the point that preceded applies here as well. Shaykh Fawzan mentions the first wording there. Dua is the core of worship, and in one narration, dua is worship. And the second one, as we heard, being the more authentic one, reported by Abu Dawood at Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah, from the hadith of an nuqman ibn Bashir, radiallahu anhumah. And regarding the second wording, at Tirmidhi said, this is a hasan, sahih, a good, authentic hadith. Shaykh Fawzan said, so this shows the tremendousness of dua, of supplication, and that it is the greatest of the types of worship. Because the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, Mukhul ibadah. It is the core of worship. And in one narration, Ad-du'a huwal ibadah. That du'a is worship. It is worship. And the second narration is more authentic than the narration, Ad-du'a mukhul ibadah. That the du'a supplication is the core of worship. Whereas the meaning is one. The meaning is one and the same. So the, hadith with its two, so the hadith with its two narrations clearly shows how tremendous dua supplication is and that it is the greatest of the types of ibadah, of worship. <coughs> Just as he, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, al-hajju arafa. So he compares, Shaykh Fawzan makes a comparison here that the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, said, al-dua hu al-ibadah. Supplication is worship. So he compares that with the saying of the Prophet sallallahu in a different hadith, al-hajju arafah. The hajj, the pilgrimage, the hajj is arafah. The hadith, as I mentioned in the footnote, being reported by the four sunan, Abu Dawud at Tirmidhi and Nasai and Ibn Majah from a hadith of Abdurrahman ibn Ya'mar al-Dayli, radiallahu an. Al-hajju arafah, hajj is arafah. And Shaykh al-Bani declared it sahih, authentic. Shaykh al-Fawzan said, meaning that the standing in Arafah, in Hajj, is the greatest pillar from the pillars of the Hajj. It doesn't mean that the whole of the Hajj is just Arafah, but rather that the standing in Arafah is the greatest of the pillars of the Hajj. And likewise, worship is not restricted to just being du'a, supplication. But rather, the meaning, rather, supplication is the greatest of its types. Therefore, he said, Ad-du'a hu al-ibadah. Supplication is worship. To show the greatness of du'a, supplication. And to clearly show its status. And then, the Shaykh, rahimahullah, he mentioned the proofs for the different types of worship, which he mentioned. And they are al-khawf, fear. And al-raja, hope and longing. And at tawakkul, trust and reliance, and al ragba fervent desire, and al rahba dread, and al khushu, reverence and humility, and al khashia, awe, and al inaba, turning repentantly, and al isti'ana, appealing for aid and assistance, 
and al istiadha seeking refuge, and al dhabh sacrifice, and al nadr making vows, and other than that from the types of worship which Allah has commanded. All of them are to be for Allah. So he, rahimahullah, said, and then the text continues, mention the first of them, al-khawf, anwa'uhu wa daliluhu. Khawf, fear, its types, and its proof. So we'll carry on with that next time, inshallah. Walhamdulillah, wa sallallahu ala Muhammad.